This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. The reason why God won't impute your sins on you. Why won't God impute sins on you? Why did he decide I will not, nor will I ever impute sins on you? Here's why. Because he's already charged your sins on the body of Jesus Christ. He's already charged your sins on the body of Jesus Christ. So why impute sin on someone where the sin has already been taken care of? Somebody's got to pay for the sin or God wouldn't be just. So what he did was he took all of your sins, he charged it to the body of Jesus so you wouldn't be charged. Get your daily dose of grace on the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. With the Changing Your World podcast, you have encouraging and life-changing wisdom at your fingertips 24-7. Gain a revelation of the fullness of God's grace from Creflo Dollar's powerful sermons. Tune in whenever you need to be edified, no matter where you are. Subscribe to Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. What is righteousness anyway? Let, 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 let me give you three perspectives, uh, definitions of righteousness, uh, and, and this is where we are, folks. So number one, the first definition you're most familiar with, it means right standing before God. I am standing right with God. Righteousness means right standing with God. The second definition, righteousness is the ability to stand in the presence of our Father as if we never sinned. How do you do that? When you know you've sinned, how do you stand in the presence of the Father uh, with uh, this whole ability, uh, the fact that I've never sinned? I stand in, in the presence of the Father as if sin never existed. Because when I receive my gift of righteousness, Jesus is not looking at anything else, but he's, but he's looking at that righteousness. He sees me through that gift of righteousness. He sees me through Jesus, and I stand before God. I'm the righteousness of God as if sin doesn't exist. I'm standing before God like sin doesn't even exist. That's what righteousness means. Can you stand before God as if sin doesn't, for, doesn't even exist? If you're standing before God like, oh, God, I'm not worthy, and oh, God, I just feel such a shame, and oh, God, I'm a nobody, or oh, God, is what I did last night. I just can't bear to come before you. I'm ashamed. See, you, you hadn't received the gift of righteousness because when you receive the gift of righteousness, you stand as if sin doesn't even exist. That's powerful. Think about that. Now, if you can't stand before God as if sin doesn't exist, you have not received that gift of righteousness. And here's the third definition, the ability to stand in the presence of our Father without any sense of guilt, fear, shame, or inferiority. You see, the fear and the guilt and the inferiority and the shame is there because, you're, because of sin. Inferiority is, 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 is there because of sin. You fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and falling short of the glory of God. Falling short of the glory of God is inferiority. And it's caused by what? You all have sinned. So you, you, you know, and now you're conscious with that. But when you've received the gift of righteousness, you stand before God without a sense of guilt, without a sense of, of, of fear, without a sense of shame, without a sense of inferiority, because by faith you say, I'm righteous. Now, I'm telling you, 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 it may sound easy what I'm talking about, but man, when you have done something stupid, but by faith you know that you're the righteousness of God, 
then you stand before God and say, I will not stand before God in fear. I will not stand before God in guilt and shame. I will not stand before God in inferiority. That's when you know you are solid in this righteousness. You're solid in receiving this. I know some of you are screaming about pull your hair out, man, but that's what it means to receive this righteousness by faith. The day you receive this righteousness by faith, watch this, you will rule and reign over fear and guilt and shame and inferiority. But you're trying to rule over fear and guilt and shame and inferiority, you know, without receiving the gift of righteousness. That's why God gave you the gift of righteousness. It is your new identity. And if you'll believe that you're righteous, then you're gonna start doing right. But every day of your life, you struggle with being righteous because of what you've done and how you've behaved. And if how, and, and it, and if how you've behaved can get you to stop receiving and believing that you're righteous, then you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. I am the righteousness of God. And the day I believe it, and when I hold on to it, I'm going to start doing right because I believe I'm the righteousness of God. Amen. Now, if you think that was radical, look at Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. I mean, for some Christians who've been in church all their life, to hear this teaching, it sounds scandalous. It sounds like, you know, it, you're ready to do, ar do an argument. You're ready to be through with me forever. Bless God, I used to like Creflo Dollar, but right now he can, just, he can just go to hell all I care. Bless God, I ain't receiving that stuff. I don't believe none of it. And just, you know, that's, you're just immature. You're, you're, you need to be weaned away from living your life under the law, weaned away from sin consciousness, weaned away from trying to be righteous based on your self-effort and works. And when you are weaned away from that, then you will understand what it means to stand as the righteousness of God. You'll understand what it, what it means to, to live that life. Now look at Romans chapter 4, verse 1. Now follow me carefully. I'm just reading the scripture right now and explaining it to you. He says, what shall we say then that Abraham our father has pertaining to the flesh or another a synonym here for in this context is works. And it'll, be, it'll prove itself out in, in verse 2. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh has found? So in other words, what should we say that Abraham our father has accomplished through his own works? He says, for if Abraham were justified. Now that word justified means declared righteous. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. He said, now if, if he became, if he's righteous because of what he did to become righteous, he said, well, God doesn't get any glory from it. He doesn't get any glory from it because he, he got what he got through his works and not by believing in Jesus Christ. And then look at verse 4. He says, now to Abraham, now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckon of grace, but of debt. Now listen to me carefully now. If the blessing of God is a reward for good behavior, then we get the credit for earning it. If the blessing of God is the reward for good behavior, then we get the credit for earning it. But if the blessing is a gift, if the blessing is a gift, then Jesus gets the credit. If it's a reward, we get the credit. If it is a gift, Jesus gets the credit. And for most of church people, most church people believe that the blessing is a reward for something that they are responsible for getting, for, 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 for getting and they get the credit for that reward. They go around and tell you, well, the reason why I'm blessed is I did these five things. The reason why I'm blessed is because I did these 10 things. But if the blessing is a gift, then Jesus gets the credit. Wow. 
Wow, think about that. I'm going to say that one more time now. Listen to me now. If the blessing of God is a reward for good behavior, then we get the credit for earning it. But if the blessing of God is a gift, then Jesus gets the credit. Well, see, the Bible calls righteousness a gift. So Jesus gets the credit. And we keep trying to earn it, work for it, deserve it, and then we get the credit. Boy, this is a serious thing. It's serious. And, and remember, the objective is so you can rule and reign in life, so you can rule and reign over your trouble, over your sickness, over your poverty, over your shortage, over your lack, when you receive the gift of righteousness. But as long as you're immature babies, where righteousness, unskillful in the word of righteousness, still thinking that it is something that uh, you have to earn instead of a gift, you're still on milk and you won't reign in life. That's why I'm talking about this. All right, now let's go a little deeper. He says in verse 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. To him that worketh not, but he believes on, on Jesus, he's the one that justifies the ungodly. He said his faith is counted for righteousness. He said he is now righteous because he had faith in Jesus Christ. His faith is counted for righteousness. Verse 6, even as David also describes the blessedness of the man, unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and, those sin and whose sins are covered. Now, look at what he says here. This is so, so very important. The word impute, notice what he says back up there. Look what he talks about imputed. He says, the man is blessed uh, to whom God imputeth righteousness. So God imputes righteousness without you having to work for it. What does it mean to impute? It, it, it literally means to charge a person with or to credit a person with. And so he says that you're blessed. David says he saw this. You're blessed because God credited you with righteousness without you having to work for it that God, God charged and put righteousness on you without you having to work for it, without, without you having to work, deserve it, and earn it. He said he just made you righteous and put it on you. Wow. Now, look at the next verse, verse 8. He said, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. This is so awesome. The Lord imputes righteousness without works, but he will not impute sin to the righteous. You know what he's saying? He's not going to hold sin against you. He's not going to charge sin against your account. He is not going to hold sin against you or against you being, he's not going to hold sin against you receiving the gift of righteousness. So, he says, if you believe and, and you believe in Jesus, you're going to receive the gift of righteousness. And he says, I'm not going to hold your sins against you. In other words, I'm not going to come to you and say, well, you can't be righteous because you did what you did last night. You can't be righteous because what you did several years ago. No, 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 no. He says, I will not hold your sin against you. For those of you who believe in Jesus Christ, I will charge righteousness to your account, and I will not charge sin to your account to hold your sin against you, for you so you won't receive your righteousness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. To impute, to charge a person with. Now, why impute sin on a man who doesn't sin? Why impute sin upon a man that doesn't sin? We have a forever gift of non-imputation of fault or sins. This is a gift. That's another gift from God. Now that you're righteous, there is no more imputation of sin. We have a forever gift of no imputation of faults and no imputation of sins. God is not going to hold your faults against you 
to stop you from receiving, glory to God, your gift of righteousness and everything that comes with it. That's mind-boggling because in church, you're so busy trying to learn how to earn everything, and we have a forever gift of non imputation of faults and sins. God will not impute sin upon the righteous. We have a no imputation of sin policy. So you cannot go to God and say, well, God, uh, I, I, I'm sick because of my sin, or oh, I'm broke because of my sin, or oh, Lord, I'm no longer righteous because of my sin. He says, uh-uh. The day you made Jesus Lord of your life, that's the day you received the gift of righteousness, and that is also the day where I gave you another gift of no imputation of sin. He said, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not. That's a very interesting sentence because when he says this word will not, uh, it, it's a very interesting word because he says by no means, I mean, this word means no with no conditions and no with conditions. In other words, he says, I will not, by no means, never will it happen. I will not, by no means, never will it happen. That's a strong when he says, I will not impute sin. He says, I won't do it with no conditions or with conditions. I will not, no, never, I will not by any means, never will it happen, impute sin or faults and hold those things against you. That's strong. That's strong. This is strong. I know it is because you got to break that religious mentality. Now look at uh, let, let, another place where he uses this same phrase, I will not, is in Hebrews chapter 13 and 5. Turn there real quick, Hebrews 13 and 5. He says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he saith, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It's the same, same word here. I will not by any means, never will it happen. Never will I ever leave you nor forsake you. I will not, no way, no how, not by any means will I leave you nor forsake you. He, he's, it's the same emphasis is on, I will not impute sin upon your account. It won't happen. Well. Brother Dollar, sounds to me like you're just giving people a license to sin. People don't need a license to sin. They've been sinning without one. Won't they go crazy, though, if you start teaching people this kind of stuff? Listen, when you don't know the truth, that's why you will do crazy sinning. It's when you don't know the truth. If you believe the right things, then you can live the right way. Wrong believing is what causes wrong living. Right believing is what causes right believing, right living. And people are doing wrong because they're believing wrong. And people who live right are doing right because they believe in right. When you don't know the truth, then you will live in sin. When you don't know the truth, you will live in sin. And that's what's been happening, ladies and gentlemen. Let me, let me show you something. Go to Romans 1, 18 and 19. Let's go King James and then message. Romans 1, 18 and 19, King James and message. And see, you see why I'm doing this series on righteousness because there are many layers, even in talking about this one subject of righteousness. And that's why you don't need to miss a Sunday. What I didn't cover, some answer I, that you maybe had in your head. Don't get frustrated. That's why I decided to do a series. We can cover all this, all right? He says, verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and ungodliness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. It sounds to me like these guys already know something. Look at the uh, message translation. Now listen to this very carefully. But God's angry displeasure erupts as acts of human mistrust and wrongdoing 
and lying accumulate, accumulate as people try to put a shroud over truth. Huh, that's the wrath of God. He says, people trying to cover up the truth. People trying to cover up the truth. But the basic reality of God is plain enough. Open your eyes and there it is. By taking a long and thoughtful look at what God has created, people have always been able to see what their eyes, uh, go back, able to see what their eyes as such can't see, eternal power, for instance, and the mystery of his divine being, so nobody has a good excuse. What happened was this. People knew God perfectly well, but when they didn't treat him like God, refusing to worship him, they, they tri 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 vilized, tribalized themselves into stillness and confusion so that there was neither sense nor direction that was left in their lives, they pretended to know it all, but were illiterate regarding life. They traded the glory of God, who holds the whole world in his hands, for, for cheap figurines that you can buy at any roadside stand. Son, that is strong. That is strong. It's like on the inside of you, you already know what's right and what's wrong. On the inside of you, you know what's right and what's wrong. Let me, let me, let me keep going. We'll, we'll deal with that in a little bit more detail later on. You knew what was right. You knew what was wrong by intuition, by intuitive knowledge. You knew what was right. You knew what was wrong. All right, now, the reason why God won't impute your sins on you why won't God impute sins on you? Why did he decide, I will not, nor will I ever impute sins on you? Here's why. Because he's already charged your sins on the body of Jesus Christ. He's already charged your sins on the body of Jesus Christ. So why impute sin on someone where the sin has already been taken care of? Somebody's got to pay for the sin or God wouldn't be just. So what he did was he took all of your sins, he charged it to the body of Jesus so you wouldn't be charged. Wow. He charged all of my sins and your sins on the body of Jesus so you would not be charged. That's powerful. That's why he won't impute sin. Is that to say that God won't judge your sins? No. For God not to judge your sins would make him unjust. He has judged every sin on the body of Jesus. Every sin that you have ever committed or will ever commit, God has already judged it on the body of Jesus Christ. Wow. Wow. And you mad at Jesus. And you don't want to have nothing to do with Jesus. And you want to excuse Jesus out of the equation. And every one of our sins, God has already judged on the body of Jesus and says, since I've judged all of your sins on the body of Jesus, I'm turning off the sin meter on your life and I will not charge any sin or, or hold any sin against you because Jesus, Jesus took the, took everything. He took everything. He took it all. And that's why I love him. That's why I will not do without him. That's why I will defend the gospel. That's why I will preach the word because Jesus, wow, wow, that's a powerful thing. When you think of God, do you think of someone sitting high on a throne, looking down and judging you? Do you feel like God is angry with you? Well, in Creflo Dollar's liberating series, Jesus, the Peacemaker, receive a revelation on how God's gift of Jesus Christ produced peace between God and man. For a love gift of just $25 or more, you can receive this series where he shows how Jesus paid the price for us to be at peace with God. Start seeing God loving you with an unconditional love. Stop trying to find reasons why it's not enough and that God doesn't want to help you and bless you and, and prosper you. 
Understanding righteousness will cause us to reign or to rule in life. When sickness comes, you rule over it. When lack comes, you rule over it. When depression comes, you rule over it. When you understand righteousness, you will rule in life. Call the number on your screen or visit CrefloDollarMinistries.org to order today. World Changers Church International and Creflo Dollar Ministries are committed to changing lives all over the world. Your generous gifts are helping us to do just that. For your added convenience, we want to invite you to join Change Express, our automatic giving service. You can give monthly and change lives by having your love gift deducted from your checking account or credit card on the same day every month. Created for convenience, Change Express makes giving easy by allowing you to pre-plan your giving, specifying the day of the month for your gift to be deducted from your designated account, and putting your seed to work, changing the lives of people around the globe. The process of giving has never been easier, so get started today. Log on to CrefloDollarMinistries.org right now to sign up for this exciting service. We never want to assume that all of you are born again Christians. Being born again is the key to experiencing God's promises in your life. It's the most important decision you can make. I want to say a prayer of, of salvation with any of you who would like to receive the gift of salvation. Pray with me and just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that Jesus was the payment for my sins that he was the sin offering. And I receive him as my peace offering. Jesus, come into my heart, save me. And today by faith, I receive you and declare that I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer with me, I wanna welcome you to the kingdom of God. Call the number on the screen and we want to provide some information for you that will help you as you begin your new walk with Jesus Christ. If you prayed the prayer of salvation with Creflo Dollar today, congratulations. We have a free CD and mini book available to help you understand salvation and learn what comes next. If you would like these resources, please call the number on your screen today. Join us online as we bring you praise and worship from the World Changers Church family and the Word of God from pastors Creflo Dollar and Taffy Dollar. For more information, visit us at CreflodollarMinistries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends.